Jesus, give the Lord another hand clap tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. At this time, we're going to have Brother Gerald come up and start us up with our worship. So let's all stand tonight. Amen. Doesn't dog and yashin zing. Amen. Touch a chair. Give them a rest. Stand up tonight and we worship the Lord and pray. So join in every song um, that Brother Gerald's going to come and share uh, some songs of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Church, your neighbor, tell him it's good to see you. Show yourself friendly. Don't stand there looking just somehow. Tribal Fair and Rodeo this year at our Gospel Jam, and they did a wonderful job. Amen. 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 So it's good to start them off young. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. It's good to be here this evening. This is worship the Lord. Let's praise. Let's sing. Amen. I know you all sing in the key of C here, but I go up one whole note. I go in D, so it might be a little too high. Amen. Let's just sing to the Lord this evening. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise.
stand up. You can stand up. I want you to do this with me today. I want you to turn around once, okay? Just turn around once. Do one turn around. I don't care which direction. Just turn around once. That's for God the Father. Turn around another time. That's for God the Son. Turn around a third time. That's for God the Holy Spirit. I hear God saying he's about to turn your lives around tonight. There's a turning coming to your life. Something is about to change. Amen. And all his promises are in him. Yes and amen. 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 When God shut no in the grand old light, he put a rainbow in the cloud. And the sky was dark. God put a rainbow in the cloud. Oh, God put a rainbow in the cloud. Oh, God put a rainbow in the cloud. When it looked like the sun wouldn't shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the cloud. Yeah. 
for the splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. Trembles at his voice. Bye. 
makes glad the city of our God. There is river whose streams makes glad the city of our God. Makes glad the city of our God, and I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. There is a fountain full of grace, and it flows. From Emmanuel's veins, there is the fountain full of grace, and it flows from Emmanuel's veins. It came and it healed me. It came and refreshed me. It came and washed my sins away. Wash my sins away. 
Sometimes we just got to turn the music down and let the people's voices be lifted up because God wants to hear you. He doesn't want to hear the worship team. He doesn't want to hear the musician. He wants to hear you. You sing. That's what he wants. Amen. So many times we let the worship sing, the worship sing for us and we don't sing. We just clap our hands. But it's time for the church to lift its voice. It's time for the church to start singing again. It's time for the church to be heard. Amen. So tonight as we sang, I really felt God's pleasure. God's heart was pleased by hearing your voice. Amen. So practice singing. Amen. Sister Rachel. Amen. Let's give it up for the Lord this evening. Let's give it up also for the worship team. These boys are awesome. Amen. I think I'll take them with me because I need a team. I travel by myself now, so I need a, a group. So they're all hired. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. How many of you guys enjoyed that? That's what God wants. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand tonight. We just thank uh, Brother Gerald for uh, ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. God's 
here, like I said, here to do a work. I know somebody's here, you know, that needed that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And tonight we're going to go ahead and go into our our fringe. You know, that's a deep amnesia. Let's look full. Let's give unto the Lord tonight. Give um, to God to part of our worship, giving unto him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight, God. We ask, Father, that, that you would bless those that, God, that are going to give unto you, Lord God, Father. There are many, Lord God, across this tent tonight, Lord God. Father, that needs just a touch from you, Lord God. And Father, we pray, Lord God, you continue to pour upon them, Lord. Let them receive, Lord God, Father, receive of you tonight, Lord. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, Father. Those that are going to give unto you, we ask God that you will bless them tonight, Lord Jesus. Those that don't have anything to give, Father, but by their faith, Lord God, they come and just even touching the basket, Lord God, that you're going to meet their need for them, that they be able to give unto you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for each and every person that's here tonight, even on the outside of the tent, Lord God, even those that are sitting in their vehicles tonight, Father, we thank you for them, Lord Jesus. Jesus, and we give you praise and we give you honor tonight. In Christ's name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to do a song called Deep Cries Out. Amen. This song involves movement. If you want to come up on that platform, just follow me. I'm not the best dancer. Excuse me, William. Give me enough room to dance. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Latoya to come, Anna to come, Connie to come, amen, CJ and Mary to come, the final girls are gone, but let's sing this song and do a little dance, amen. Deep cries out, i got to pull my skirt up, been losing this weight, my skirts are all getting big on me. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, no. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Gerald, I don't know what key, but we'll just do it. Thank you, Lord. I got a river leaving water a fountain that never will run dry. Come on, do what I'm doing. If you know Stirring up deep, deep well 
And you know, I have always, you know, heard the, read the, the scripture of how the woman came to see Jesus and brought an alabaster box. And he talked about how she came in from the back. And all she wanted to do was worship the Lord. She didn't care about a platform. She didn't care about the instruments. She didn't care. She just knew that she had to get before the Lord. Amen. And you know, that's how worship is. Sometimes there's no music, but there should be a music in your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you know, tonight we're expecting an awesome word again. Amen. And you know, we fed you physically. Your belly is full and satisfied. And tonight, we're going to, uh, Pastor uh, Paul, and he says, here already. Amen. amen. You shout amen for him, okay? You believe in the way you shout amen. Do something tonight. Amen. But we're going to go ahead and ask these ladies, our, our, our uh, sister church. Amen. All the way from the World Evangelism Revival Center. Under Pastor John Patui. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for his goodness, his grace. Hallelujah. Before we go on, I'm just going to say I appreciate Pastor uh, Trina, uh, Pastor Appreciation. Uh, we just came from a, a little um, get together at uh, Church of Calvary. But praise the Lord, I thank God for all the ministers. You know, God has been so good to give us leaders and that we're able to, you know, walk forth in, in all the things that God has for us. Hallelujah. You know, I thank the Lord that, you know, we love him because he first loved us. You know, last Sunday, last Sunday we were teaching, I was teaching about that, that because Jesus loved us, we love everybody. We love 
people that don't even know Christ. We love the ones that are walking on the sidewalks. We love each and every one of them. I love all of you here today, tonight. Hallelujah. And I was talking to the church and I said we ought to love one another. You know, uh, in this ministry, you know, we need to stand beside our pastor. And I said, when we come to prayer meeting, we all need to come together and pray. And Tuesday night was our prayer meeting. And praise the Lord. You know what? We had a, 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 a church full of believers. We were coming together to pray. I, I counted like over 30 people there. And Pastor turned around and said, we ought to have church tonight. Hallelujah. You know, I thank the Lord for that, that we're able to love one another. So praise God because, you know, Jesus loved us. Hallelujah. That today we can love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing a song for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I would not be denied, hallelujah. Da it's a
a brother that usually comes by and visits our church. Amen. I, I believe Pete. Pete is his name. Amen. Amen. He's here visiting tonight. And, you know, we want to call him up and give him an, uh, a chance to say a few words tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're, we're happy. I'm happy to have Brother David here tonight. Amen. Sister B here also. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you for the warm invitation. Uh, we've been visiting the jail. We preach the gospel there. We just love the people here. And uh, I just want to make a quick announcement over the villages and over the city out here. Would you guys pray with me? We're going to pray that the Lord would bring them in and pour out His Spirit and pour out revival over the people. So wonderful, Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father, we ask you to tug on the heart and bring the people up here, Lord. Bring them here tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they may taste and see that he is good. And to the nation of San Carlos, we call you up to the hill to taste and see the Lord is good. Come, come, we say come. The Spirit of the Lord says come and taste him. He is good. Forget about what your friends are saying and come and taste and see he is so good. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, hallelujah. Thank you. This is just so, we're just praising the Lord, my wife and I. We're having a great time. Thank you, third day, for inviting us. Hallelujah. Hey, we love you guys, and uh, we're, we're with you, and we're praying for you. Thank you very much. Oh, one, one more thing. In, a, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come tonight and pour out healing over all the people here, Lord. Any sickness, we come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We break the power of sickness. We bind the spirits of the devil tonight in the name of Jesus. We stand on the word of God. Um, um, Luke 10, 19 says, Lo, we shall tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy tonight. We take hold of our authority and we bind all dem demonic opposition and we take hold of the healing power tonight. In Jesus' name, I pray healing over everybody here and we receive it by faith. We take hold of it by faith. And we give you thanks for a wonderful Father. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for healing our minds. Thank you, Lord. Every hurting back be healed. Every stress or pain go tonight. In the name of Jesus, we take a hold of our healing. Come, nation, come and be healed tonight. Come up here and get healed. Come up and get peace and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we're, we're thankful that, you know, we have brothers and sisters that are out there. Amen. Doing the same work that we're doing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus said that there are out there that are doing the work. Praise the Lord. And, you know, the body of Christ, it, there's many members all over the world. And we share... And, and one is that the salvation only in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, my nephew here, I was riding down with him earlier, and he was just telling me about, you know, he was just stirring up my heart tonight. We were driving down, and he said, you know, this is what we should do. This is what we need. 
And you know what? I, I'm going to go by what his heart is saying. Amen. Amen. He said that we, I want to set up, which we did, you know, before, and get all kind of musicians to witness out that way. Amen. I've, I've heard people tell me that they hear us way out there. Amen. They hear us out there. And you know, earlier today, I prayed for a young woman. She said, you need to put out speakers right here so we can hear better out there. We need to get to, get to work. Praise the Lord. One morning I was standing out there with the tiny little amp and speaker and I said, Jesus loves you. Way on the other side, Pastor. Lanisa, somebody said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So, you know, we, we have that advantage. We have that opportunity. Amen. We're blessed tonight. Amen. Let's all stand this evening, you know, tonight, and we have tomorrow night left. Uh, we're going to start at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. If you want to sing your song, come at 6 o'clock and sing your song and your testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing the song and your testimony. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the six o'clock. What time did I say? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Tomorrow after church, we're going to have baptism right here. We have the water ready to go. Yeah. Amen. We're going to have baptism here. And you know, God is working. God is moving. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we don't see it, but he is. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you don't see yourself growing, but you know you're growing. Likewise, we're, we're growing in the Lord. Amen. I feel the growth in me. Do you feel the growth in you? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we have uh, Pastor Paul all the way from Phoenix Church of His Presence. Amen. I invited him and uh, we had him here a couple of years back. I enjoyed his ministry. Praise the Lord. So stay. Listen to the word. Amen. Amen. That the song, the, the singing were awesome. But nothing compares to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's stay till the end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, welcome him and clap your hands for the Lord as he comes tonight. Amen. Take your liberty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. You see, I don't know about you, but I came tonight to enjoy the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. And the way we enjoy the presence of the Almighty God is by enjoying Him. Yeah. And before we start the Word tonight, I want you to forget about everybody else around you. I want you to close your eyes. And we're just going to play for a couple of minutes. Gerald's just going to play some music. And I want you to personally invite God to come. I want you to personally invite the Holy Spirit come sweep through this area. Pour down upon us. I want you to ask the Lord, Lord, what is your desire tonight? Not what our desire is. God, what is your desire? Let us fulfill it in our lives tonight through you, Lord. Now worship. So close your eyes. Forget about the person next to you. And just begin to worship the Lord. Let's go.
about your praise. If you were in a football game, you'd be shouting and screaming for the team you want. I know that we're very quiet many times when we give praise to God. But tonight's not one of those nights. God has expressly tonight said to me, I've come to do something in their midst. So what I need you to do is this. Quit being nice. Get loud. Quit being churchy. Get loud. Quit being afraid. You're a Christian. There is none like you. Fathers, we raise our praise unto you tonight. God, it's with a welcome heart that you, Lord, have said, just come and join me. Heart, welcome us. God, we have just taken that welcome and we've come in. And we're thanking you, Lord, for that which you have prepared. I need you to do me a favor tonight because I have a bad habit. I'll start talking into the mic. I'll get excited. And actually it, goes down here. it goes down. So if I start going down and I start hard getting to hear me, do this. Stick it up to your mouth. And I'll tell me, put it back up, Mark, we can hear you. I'm excited tonight to come. And Sister Trina, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to come. Sometime back, when Sister Tina had asked me to come, I just, in my heart, Lord, what am I going to say? That's that's typically me. What am I going to say? How do you want me to say it? And as we drew closer, I could just feel like the Lord, you know, 
Well, I have something. I have something. Got close. I have something. I have something. And finally, it was like, uh, excuse me, we're getting really close. I have something. And then this, this week, I sat down and I said, Father, I'm speaking Saturday. I said, God, I know that you have something to store. I said, what is it that you want me to say? And he spoke very clearly and distinctly to me. And he said, I've already given you the message. I've been preparing it in your heart for the last couple of months. And he began to bring me back. We have a, a Friday night Bible study. I'm just down down here for a little bit. <laughs> we have a Friday night Bible study that was a miracle in itself when he started. And when that Bible study started, God said, I have a reason and I have a purpose for what I'm doing. He said, I am preparing the hearts of my people that are that you will be speaking to because I'm about to burst forth in their lives. And they need to know who they are, what they are, who I am, what I have done, because I am going to burst forth in them and I am going to release them into ministry to where they don't have to depend upon anybody but me, the Lord God. And God was so excited about what he was saying to me. He's like, wow, God, that's just good. Are you sure you got the right person to do this Bible study? Because it's like, Lord, you're talking great things. He said, tell them what I've taught you. Tell them what I've taught you. I said, okay. We started having the Bible study. We didn't have Bible study. We started having church. We would get into the Word of God. We talk about it. We talk about the subjects, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit would just come and settle down. And God sent us men and women that had that prophetic word, and the word started going forth. We watched some miracles actually just take place in front of everybody. We watched words come forth, and they started manifesting in people's lives. And God said, "Paul, I'm sending you to re to the to revive." Because I'm about to cut loose on my people. And what did Gerald say tonight when he got up there? He said, God said, I'm about to cut you loose. I'm about to turn you loose. But before God turns us loose, we've got to get some stuff right in our life. As Christians, we do. I want to talk about just four areas that, that I feel like the Lord has put up on my heart tonight to speak about. But there are four areas that stop us as Christians from moving forward in the confidence and the ability of God and in the strength and the power and the might of the Holy Spirit in going forward and doing something. We find ourselves on a constant basis in church held back. And I just felt like the Lord just said, go over a couple of these. Now I have a lot of scripture, but I'm not going to read all of it. Some of it, I'm going to refer to it. Some of it, I will read. Oh, thank you. Gerald knows me too well. <laughs> this is home. Areas that stop us from growing strong and maturing in Christ. You know, one of the things that, that really defeats Christians so much is that they really don't know the God they serve. You say, what would the kids say today? Shut up! <laughs> no, I, I honestly want to say that, that we as Christians... We as Christians, do you really know the God you serve? And I'm serious about the question because we've come to church so many times. We've come to church all of our lives. We have sat in church. We have listened to the preacher preach. We have gone to Sunday school. We have gone to Bible study. We have gone all through all of this. And we think in our minds, we think in our hearts, well, I've got a good relationship with Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Well, how about while you're here on earth? It's wonderful that we're going to heaven, but we were not we were not saved just to go to heaven. 
We were saved to become examples to the world of who Christ is. And the thing is, if we're going to be that example, do you know the God you serve? Because if you don't, something's wrong. Many times we're, again, too busy to develop a strong, healthy, growing relationship with Christ. Strong relationships, strong relationships show. Let me get this out real quick. Uh, They show being able to hear and recognize God's voice. John chapter 8, verse 40. Chap says, and this was when Jesus was talking to some people. They said, our father is Abraham, they declared. No, Jesus replied, for if you really were the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham never did such a thing. What did Jesus say? I'm telling you the truth. Why? Because I heard from God. How many of you believe that Adam and Eve were different than you were? Boy, it's quiet in here. How many of you believe that Adam and Eve were so different that they're so high up, are so mighty, are so holy that we can't touch where they were at? They were just like us. There you're, how many times we move great grandmother, great grandfather? Because whether we like it or not, we're all related. We are. We just, as things branched out, we were still related. But in the Garden of Eden, in, in Genesis chapter 3, God went looking for Adam and Eve. They had sinned. The devil had, had, had you know, just lied to them and they had accepted it. Now I always like to bring this up, guys. Everybody blames the woman for sinning, you know? Hey. The guys walked into it with their eyes wide open. We never put up a fight. Satan deceived the woman. The guy did into the apple without a fight. We can't blame the woman. We were just as much as fault. But when they sinned, God came into the garden. Adam, Eve, all their names, where are you? They were hiding. Later on, when, when Adam finally comes out, God says, where were you? Well, I was hiding. Well, why were you hiding? Because I was naked. Who told you you were naked? The devil, the snake, serpent. Did you eat of the fruit? Yes, I. Yes, we did. Was there a conversation going on there? Could they hear the Lord? Could the Lord hear them? Did the conversation make sense? Did it have a subject? Were they... You know, did it seem like they were used to be, or they were used to talking to God? So you're telling me that Adam and Eve could talk to God. They were comfortable talking to God. In fact, the reason they were hiding because they knew they had disappointed God and surveyed Him. So there's a relationship there, right? But the thing is, do you think they knew the heart of God? Because did they know the heart of God? Yes. Don't eat the fruit, right? Do you think they understood what God wanted of them? Was it so hard to understand? It should not be the same way with us. We should not have to fight trying to hear the voice of God. You can learn the voice of God. But what it takes is us as individuals developing a relationship with Him. You know, for a long time, I didn't know Gerald. When he first came to Bible school, I always laughed. You listen to him and my son talk. And Gerald thought my son was a stuck-up preacher's kid. And my son thought Gerald was a, a holy, sanctified, uh, know-it-all Christian that was of no good spiritually. And yet, Gerald will be, Gerald will be doing my son's wedding in three weeks. 
Why? Because they developed a friendship. From not liking each other, they came and they began to talk. They began to work together. They began to do things together. They began to, they began to understand where they were, each was coming from. And they developed a strong, strong bond. My son went through a rough time in his life. You know who his strong person was that kept him centered? His best friend, Gerald. Kept talking to him. Kept encouraging him. But what I'm saying is this. That relationship just did not happen like, boom, it was there. No. It took years to develop because they constantly went at it. Ours is like this. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I ask you, Lord, my soul to keep. Because mommy and dad don't like this. <laughs> well, I, I, learned the one, I learned the one in college, too. Now I lay me down to rest, a pile of books upon my chest. If I should die before I wake, that's one less test I have to take. Yes. <laughs> But in many ways, that's how we treat God. We, for some reason, maybe it was because when we were growing up or whatever, for us older guys, <clears throat> somebody called me up, told me I was not as young as I once was. I have to agree with you. But I'm not old. Old is a state of mind. <laughs> my, <clears throat> my body's just mature and out of shape. <laughs> but anyway, going back, you know, when you think about it, when we look at our relationship with God, what is yours like? How are you treating God? You know, like I said, when we were, I was growing up, we always viewed God as God with the big stick. Man, he couldn't wait till we did something wrong. Because he's going to whack, whack us across the head. Like he was going to punish us. And if we didn't do the right thing, he was going to throw us into hell. We got a wrong perception of God. God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. God doesn't stand there with his big stick. Either you obey me, I'm going to whack you over the head. That's not God. And yet so many people as Christians hold that type of a thought that that's God. God is love. But God is not only love. God is a... God is a God who takes his people, teaches them, trains them, works with them, helps them to mature in him so they can stand on their own two feet and go forward. He is a God who does not hide himself. As you begin to walk with the Lord and, and, and move with God, he reveals every aspect of his personality. Okay? Knowing God's heart and desire, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9-12 to and 2.16. I'll read it for you if you don't mind. This is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, nor ear heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. Wow. I like that. Verse 9 says, This is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear heard, no, and no mind has imagined, but God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by the Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. I, I just read that, didn't I? Good. I guess I was, over, I was emphasizing this second time. But what does it say? It says that who knows God's Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Folks, who do we have inside of us? Who knows the thoughts of God? Who reveals to us the heart and mind of Christ? Guess what? It's there. Every single one of us. 
You don't have to stand there just like, Jesus, what is your will for my life? You don't have to do that. Hey, Lord, I know you have a plan for my life. But just speak to me and just begin to reveal it. So I can hear it and understand it. It's in the Word of God. Lord, would you just lead me to the passages that talk to what you want me doing? God will tell you when he joke. And it's fun. Hey, do you know that God takes uh, tells jokes? God, does God tell jokes? Oh, he hasn't had them told yet. Hey, the first time I ever saw this happen, I was we, we were having our church was having a, a week of fasting and prayer uh, to see what God would do. And my pastor and myself, we took all the hours that nobody else, you know, took. And so a lot of times we found ourselves praying at two or three o'clock in the morning. And this one day we were at the altar, it's about two o'clock in the morning. We've been praying, you know, and, and everything. And all of a sudden my pastor just starts busting up laughing. It's like, this is, we're praying, why is he laughing? So, Pastor, what are you laughing about? He goes, God just told me a joke. I thought to myself, God won't tell jokes. But he told me the joke. All I remember, all I remember was the punchline. The punchline was John 3, 16. And it was funny. But God tells jokes. And God likes to make comments in ways that you understand. One day I was having a bad time. I've told some of these stories, but I need to tell you this one. I was having a bad, bad day. I came home from work. I was so mad because I worked at a Bible school. And Christians are supposed to be Christians and not get mad. I was mad. I was so mad I came home. And I looked at my wife. I said, don't disturb me. I'm going to my prayer closet. Went into my prayer closet. And I was so mad. I just said, I'm sorry. I don't have the words to talk to you about it, but I'll try. I grabbed the pillow and I shoved it over my face. And I just started. It sounded something like this. I don't I don't want to talk to you right now. And I did. And I probably screamed for a full half hour to that pillow. I was <clears throat> upset. I was upset. And when I and I knew, I knew I wasn't approaching God correctly. And and so I went and I, when I was done, I said, well, thank you, Lord. I, I, I sincerely apologize for the manner. The Lord show me how to take this thing and do it correctly. Second day, <clears throat> we're done. <clears throat> work at Bible school. It got worse. I walked in my door. I walked in the door at the end of work. And my wife and he said, prayer closet's over there. <laughs> Went over there. Got in the closet. Now, by the third day, it got even worse. <laughs> that Bible school. And I walked on, I came mad. My wife just looked at me, looked at the door, and I just went to the door and went in my closet, and picked up my pillow, and I started off. God! I am so not hurt. Are you finished? <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I sit up straight across my legs with my, hat, my, 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 my hand on my lap. And I said, yes, sir. And I heard this, Paul. I heard you the first time. Yes, sir. Paul, do you see how I'm talking to you now? Yes, sir. Paul. You can expect that out of me every time. Yes, sir. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And I turned around and walked out of my closet. Now, my closet was only from here to maybe there. But boy, it sure looked like it was out the very end of the parking lot. I learned something that day. I learned how to begin to talk to God. I heard his voice. I heard how he talked to me. See, God talks to each of us differently. He talks to us in a way we understand. 
He had to talk with me like that that night because I'm hard-headed. I wasn't listening. I got too comfortable taking advantage of the grace of God. So God got my attention, and he did. But I learned that God heard me, and the moment I started talking, he was listening. It's the same way with you. If you think that God can't be funny, how about another time, same prayer closet. I'm sitting there, I've had a rough day, and I'm just telling God about my rough day. <clears throat> Here's the door to my closet. God walks in, takes one look at me, he's got this huge smile. By the way, I'm not seeing him with these eyes, I'm seeing him with the eyes and the heart, okay? And he looks down at me, and there's this big smile on his face. I'm having a pity party. And God looks down and he says, Hey, Lanusa. You're your own worst enemy. Turned around and walked, walked, out of, walked out of my closet laughing. And I put my head up and said, You're not supposed to be like that. And over his shoulder, I heard, <laughs> laughing at me. <laughs> so, what am I supposed to be like? I, 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 and he just walked out. God's fun. You've got to learn. Look, if you look at the Word of God and what the different things He does, He laughs. He has fun with His creation. He wants relationship. He doesn't want to be the God in heaven who everybody sees as having a big stick. He's not the God that stands away from you watching the circumstances happen in your life and never being a part of it. God is intimately involved in your life and still wants to be involved in your life every moment of your life. You see, we know. We know what's in God's heart because in Psalms 119, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Wow. Wow. You can have a personal relationship with God. I always laugh because Gerald's been a part of a couple of these. But I like to tease God. Now, as a fisherman, guys, what do guys, what do they want to catch? A big fish that you can brag on and talk about how good you were. Right? Yeah. So we had a church camp. All church camp, I was busy. I was working as a pastor. I was getting it done. And everybody, every time I got off where I had a break, all the kids had the fishing poles. They had the bait. They were out there having a blast. And I didn't get the fish. The very last night of, of camp, and the next morning we are having our last service and everything else. And I got mischievous with the Lord. I said, God? <clears throat> you know, my wife was asleep. My daughter was asleep in the tent. And I'm there on oh, my oh, my. my Sleeping bag, and that mischievous comes up and says, Oh God, I've been such a good pastor. I went through everything I had done, and I was making myself so, sound so pious and so good. And at the very end, I couldn't stand myself anymore. It's like, Ugh. And finally, I just turned it off and said, Okay, God. I said, You know, and I went to that part where, like, Lord, you know, I was so good that. I let the kids have the fishing poles, and I let the kids have the bait. And God, I was wanting this big fish, and I went through the whole thing. At the very end, I just started laughing. I apologized. I said, God, you know, I'm just teasing, but thank you for the wonderfulness of who you are. I appreciate who you are. The next morning, I hear talking. I open up the tent, uh, tent flap, and my friend Dennis, yo, Paul, the kids are all asleep. The poles are there. The bait's right there. Let's go fishing. It's right at that time when the fish bite. We go down. Uh, I mean, the fish are jumping. We're watching 10 pounders, 15 pounders. It's like, whoa, look at get something. Yeah. And we have our poles out, and nothing's happening. So I said, hey, I'm going to go down. The uh, tide is out. There's a big slick of mud, mud, mud covered rocks. So I'm going down there. I go down there, and I find a place. I'm standing with my water, my water, by the water, my line in the line, line in the water. And all of a sudden, my pole goes down. And I'm thinking, what was that? Because I slipped too. Is that a fish? Is it, is it a pool? Okay. So I started reeling it, and all of a sudden it starts fighting again. And I look up and I said, 
Siri likes to talk to me. And I said, Dennis, do you see anything? He goes, you got a big one. I can see it from up here. It's big. I'm coming down with the net. He comes down with the net. We pull it after a, a nice spike, but every time I just stop breathing, it stopped fighting. What's going on? Pull this thing in, and when I pull it in, it's a big fish. I mean, it's up to you. I, I, I am, you know, in fact, it's really up to you because I shrunk a little bit. But it really, I mean, it's a good fish. And I picked it up, and we weighed it later on. Uh, it weighed about anywhere from 13 to 50 pounds. 15 pounds, and it was a bass. Oh, man. I caught me a fish. And I looked. There was not a hook in its mouth. I looked. And you know where the, the throat opens up? My hook was on on three sides. It was hooked on one side, hooked on another side, and hooked on another side. And when you and when the line was coming out, it was coming straight out the middle of his mouth. That poor fish was in pain. That's why he was fighting me so much. But when I got it up, I looked at that and I said out loud, there's no way that I could have hooked that fish. And I heard God say, ha! <laughs> so I'm, what I'm saying is God loves you enough that he'll even play jokes on you. He'll tell you stuff. But that's the type of relationship you can have with God. And then it doesn't stop. You don't, you're not being disrespectful. Trust me. There have been times where I have been wrong in my attitudes. One time I, I had done something and it was wrong and I was just ignoring God and I heard God say, you knew better. I straightened up real quick like I asked forgiveness and got my relationship right. All I'm saying is folks, you need to develop a strong, healthy, growing relationship with Christ. Good. Secondly, you need to get rid of the wrong mindset. And what do you mean a wrong mindset? Having a mindset that is opposite or in violation of what the Word of God says concerning you. So many of us think so bad about ourselves. We do. How many of you, you don't have to put your hand up or answer, but how many of you hold things against yourself that go back into your teen years? Things, mistakes that you made. Things that happen that to this day you still hold it against yourself. I never should have done that. I was a Christian and knew better. Or you hurt people. I never should have done that. I hurt people. God's forgiven you. They've forgiven you. But you have not forgiven yourself. And because of things like this, you know, because of things people have said about us, things that, that have happened in our lives, we look at ourselves and we think of ourselves as being less than the child of God that you are. How can I ever be a good child of God? I did this, 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 and this. God can't use me because of this, 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 and this. And, and it, you know, and, and, and brother back there just hates me because I don't go to jail and preach with him. And, and, and his wife doesn't like me because, because, oh, she just doesn't like me. And we hold all these things inside. And every single one of us begins to put ourselves down from what God said you are. We need to get rid of that garbage. You see, an incorrect understanding of who you are and building up that stronghold by verbally proclaiming that identity and living it hurts. How many of you are growing up, your parent or a friend or a teacher said, you're so stupid. How could you act your way that way? Ignorant, ugly. Oh, why should I even be your friend? And how many people accept it? And how many people begin to think of, well, I'm ugly, I'm stupid. You know, I'm not going to have friends. We create a mindset inside here that becomes a stronghold that that doesn't need to be there. That we can get rid of it. Get rid of it. You see, what does God say about me? Number one, I can overcome a, ne a negative self-image. Philippians 4.13 I'm part of God's family. Ephesians 2.19 I have power over demonic forces. Ephesians 6.10-12 God has given me his armor. 
and His mighty power. I'm strong in the Lord, and I can stand strong in the Lord. God says it about you. You look at any one of those scriptures, and it's going to tell you who you are. So quit allowing the enemy to use what everybody else has said and begin to say back to him, no, 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 you got this wrong. Let me quote to you what the Bible says about me. And as you read it, look at it, say it. At the very end of it, rebuke him. And now, in the name of Jesus, I come against every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness and age, over every spiritual wickedness in high places. I come, I come against every demon that's been assigned. I come against, come against every demon that's come because of any open doors in my life. I come against every demon that comes with those demons because they're associated with them. And I come against every demon that's just coming to cause problems. By the authority of the name of Jesus, I bind you by the authority of that name. Get out of here. And don't come back. Can I do that? Yes. It's in the word of God. Well, why should he obey me? Because I'm still human. Because you're not saying it in the order. You said it the name in the name of Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord of things above the earth, of things below the earth, of things on the earth, to the glory of God the Father. So quit accepting what the devil is pushing on you and saying that this is really who you are. And tell him to shut up. I'm not going to be nice and say be quiet. Tell him to shut up. And give them the word of God. And then you can cast them out. Why should you have to put up with it? And then, here's another thing. Go look in the mirror. And anything you hold against yourself, first of all, look in the mirror. Since it's Paul, the iPhone, love you, Paul. I think you're a pretty great guy. You know what I'm doing? Basically, I'm restructuring my, my subconscious. Because all these years I told myself, you're stupid, you're dumb, I don't like you, I hate you. And all of a sudden I hear myself, smile. first I'm smiling, I look at myself and say, hey Paul, I love you Paul, you're a good guy. In fact, we're good guys. My subconscious goes, do 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 do. Oh, wait, what, I'm a good guy? Sure. I'm a good guy. And you begin to forgive yourself for the things that you did. Hey, maybe when you were, maybe when you were, had a rough time, Maybe uh, I was in the jail and he came and talked to us, you know. And man, I just wanted, oh, in fact, I just cussed him out because I was so mad. He didn't like him. And now I get out, I get saved. And he's forgiven me, God's forgiven me. And I'm still holding inside that I said those things. I look in the mirror and say, Yo, Paul, you know, when you spoke to him, you cussed him out, and you never forgive yourself, I, Paul, forgive you, Paul. Because if God's forgiven it, he's forgiven it. I know you'll never do it again. And bro, man, this is good. You're free. You speak to yourself. You talk to yourself. You get this going through your head because you are not who the devil says you are. You are God's child. Go get, to, get into the Word of God. Get into the Word of God, Christian. Find out who you are. Yes, I can tell you, but I don't want to tell you. I want you to get into the Word of God and discover for yourself who you are so that you can get back and you can tell the devil, no, the Word of God says... This about me. Look, look at family God. Look at child of God. Look at the power of God. Look at what God has given you. Tell him who you are in Christ. The next thing that, that happens, okay, is living and existing in a wrong atmosphere. So far we have covered you're too busy to develop a strong relationship. You got the wrong mindset. But how about living and in, in, in existing in a wrong atmosphere? Huh? A wrong atmosphere. If, let's say I lived in my home, and every day I walked in, and I grumbled, and I complained, and I called my wife names and told my children they were stupid, and kicked the dog a couple times and threw the cat out, and you know, <laughs> and I did this every day for years. And then when my kids grew up, or in fact, then as my kids were growing up, my kids were doing the same thing. So they kicked the dog and threw the cat out the window, and you know, and then they were saying they were cussing, they were swearing, they were talking bad about mom and dad, and you know, the bad thing was is we were supposed to be Christians, but we were doing all this kind of stuff. What type of atmosphere have I created in my home? 
Is it a Christian one? No, it's an ungodly one. And the thing is, many times we do that for years, never realizing that we are doing this. Never realizing that we have not gotten rid of it. You know, I, I, I was listening to a, a minister preach, and they had a great revival. In fact, I'll tell you, it was John Kilpatrick. And they were talking, he was talking about how they had these, the wonderful Brownsville revival, and said after service one day, this family called them over. They had been on the verge of divorce. You know, they had been saying wrong things about each other, and, and the family was really on the brink of it, and the, the Brownsville revival happened, and boom. God healed that family. But they said, Pastor, we're confused. I said, what's wrong? I said, we leave here. We have the victory. We have the victory. We get back into our house, and within five minutes of getting into our house, we are at each other's throats. I'm talking bad about my wife. She's talking bad about me. The kids are upset with mom and dad, and, and, and they're speaking bad about us. And we are just in disarray. And yet we just came from a wonderful, wonderful service. What's happening? atmosphere. They had created an atmosphere. And that atmosphere had not been taken care of. You know how to get rid of atmosphere? It's fun. Number one, say, repent. Now, everybody say, to get rid of the atmosphere, I repent about that atmosphere. Let me say this, okay? Repent. Stand in your house. Lord, as the head of the home, I repent over everything bad that was said, things that were not of you, did not follow the word of God, and have created an ungodly atmosphere in our home. As a family, we apologize and repent and ask forgiveness for it. Now, I've asked forgiveness for it. Has God forgiven it? Yes. So, good. God's forgiven it. Wonderful. Now, I want you to say, Rebuke. Because you see, I said it. I asked repentance for it, but I never took it back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in my house and say, yeah, Lord, we as a family, I'm sorry. Okay, Lord, as the head of the home, I rebuke, cast down, and command to be broken and die things that were said or done here in the name of it, if you know what you're talking about that have become strongholds in the atmosphere of this home. In Jesus' name, I command that you die, the spine of the attack be broken, and never again rise in this home. You see, taking the authority over everything that I placed, not really knowing about, I, I placed in the atmosphere over my home, or either my kids or my wife or anybody else who came out of my home speaking about it. And I commanded it to be broken, cast down every obstacle we move, you know, the spine of it be broken, you know. I killed this thing and I told it, don't ever rise again. Then I want you to say, restate. In other words, you're going to restate what you have said the right way. And this was the fun part. It says, Lord, we as a family invite you into this home and atmosphere. Now write out a blessing for your home. Father, I pray that Lord that rest would be in my home. Or in fact, Lord, I bless my home with rest for my life. I bless it with kind words of that when we eat at the table, that Father would be a, not only a loving spirit, but a friendly spirit where we talk about you. And God, we are enjoying our soul so much, Lord, that you just come down and join us. And Lord, that we just enjoy being around each other. When we go to sleep at night, Lord, I I just bless this home with peaceful sleep. And, and no disturbance. Do you realize that you can do this? And the thing is, have fun with it. What do you want? What do you want your house to look like? When people walk inside, what do you want your house to show? Get before the Lord. Restate the purpose of what your home does. Tell God. And guess what? It works for churches. For years. For years, we walk into buildings that. You know, there's this split and that split and this split and this split and this family left and that family left. In fact, the whole church broke up and this new church came in and this time, you know, we have been many times in church buildings or in church groups, there have been gigantic things that have happened. And there are things that people hold in their hearts. Time to get rid of them. Time to get rid of them. 
get rid of them. Why? Because God doesn't want it there. And it blocks what God wants to do. You see, when we've got this big, huge overhead sticking over my head, how can God get through it if I have not removed it? And that's what God is saying today. I look around my home, the churches I knew and stuff, and I look at how many churches have started from other churches and splits and how much hard feelings and how much we all believe the same thing and we believe in the same God, but we're still fighting. That's a cause it to stop. It's the, in fact, anything that you have been through tonight, you can stop it. Because God said he's here tonight to clean, to heal, and bring you to the next level with him. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah I believe it. So, after you have done all of this, and I'll go through each room in your home, anoint it with oil, invite the Holy Spirit to flow through each room, the blessings of God to be in each one. And after you've done the behavior, oh, okay, and after you are done, the behavior in the home must change. You cannot do the same things you have been doing. You've broken it, you've cast them off. Now, do the right thing and start acting opposite. In other words, the correct way in the home. Okay. Why? You're creating a new home atmosphere. Then the last one. Sinful actions that you know you are committing. We might not see them as a church or as a body. But other people see them. Other people know about them. In fact, you might even hide it from them. But you can't hide it from God. You can't hide it from God. This is a passage of scripture I want you to I want to read. Because you see, by your actions, by your actions, you bring into your home and into your life, into your business, into your whole world. The blessings are the persons of the Lord. And I'll say it again. By your actions, you will either bring the blessings of the Lord or the cursings of the Lord. But Brother Paul, I'm a Christian. Exactly. But we as Christians do that. I'll tell you one of the first things that people don't realize. Because we have been taught that you have to tithe. You know that tithing is required. God, does, God doesn't say if you want to do it. God says you have to do it. Why? Because it belongs to Him. 10% of your income belongs to Him. Now God knows we have trouble with that. In fact, I had a, I had a good guy in my church. He's like, sorry, but I, I can't give it. Why? I earned that money. I don't understand this thing about it. Everything's God's. Well, can you give sometime? Because the Bible says, prove me now with this. He's like, I can't. How much can you get? 3%. Okay, cool. Get a book, write down everything so that you know what's going on. You got a book, you wrote it down. The next week he came up, but well, I can go to 6%. Why? Open his wallet, there's a $20 bill. He said, at this time of the month, there is no money in my wallet. I've paid all my bills. I've done everything the same as I've always done it. I have a habit of doing that. How do I have a $20 bill in my wallet? That doesn't happen. I'll give 6%. End of the month, the ball, I'll be carrying my 10%. Why? What's going on? He opened it up. There's a $20 bill plus more bills. At the end of the month, I never have money in my wallet. This is impossible. The only way this can happen is God is doing this. If it's a miracle. So I can give. I can give my 10%. The next thing you know, you got to understand, the Bible says that when you give God the tithing like He wants, He will bless. He'll bless in such a way that it says that uh, your fruit will not be cast off the vines before it's ready. He just blesses all you do. He does. And the other thing is, offerings is where your heart shows to God. Not tithing. Tithing is required. Offerings tell God how much you really appreciate Him because offerings tell where your heart is at. So if you're just giving your tithes, you're just obeying the word of God. 
But if you give me offerings, you're telling God, and above my tithes, which I require, I love you, Lord. Here, take this. And the Lord says, well, you guys say, well, how much? How much you and God decide you want to give? That's up to you. The guy I was telling you about, they were so blessed, I finally asked him years later. And he wouldn't mind if I use his name, so I'll say Trent. I said, Trent, I'm just curious. How much in tithes did you actually give? Because you guys were just, everybody saw the blessing. He put his hand down and he just smiled. He said, God, it was so good. He said, my wife and myself started giving 15% tithe. And Brother Paul, we gave 30, uh, 15% offering. They were giving 30% of their income to the Lord. And God blessed them like he would have He forgot the lesson. Because he was being blessed so much, he forgot the lesson, stopped tithing, and the blessings disappeared. I came up to talk to me one day, and looking at man by the phone, I said, what's changed? And he just stopped. Don't say another word. They went back to tithing and giving offers. All of a sudden, the blessings were all right back. That's one of the best ways to do it. But in Deuteronomy, how long have I been preaching? I'm so, I'm so good. Okay. I don't want to, I don't want to keep you just far away. If you go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, that's the tech version. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be using the New Living Testament. Then I'm going to read 1 to 14 to start off with, okay? If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I am giving you, okay, give me the, give me, what did he, what did he just say? If I do what? Okay. If I fully obey the Lord, my God, and carefully keep all his commands. Okay? In other words, if I love the Lord and I and I and I follow the word of God, right? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Look what happens for you. Okay? Uh, if you keep all the commands that he's given you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Again, he's talking to the nation of Israel. We've got to understand. He's talking to the people. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and breadboards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, the Lord will establish you as his, as his holy people as he swore he would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are a people claimed by the Lord, and they will stand in awe of you. Now you'll say, well, Brother Paul, that was given to the nation of Israel, you know, to Abraham and all of them. On the day that you accepted Christ as your personal Savior, God Amen. adopted you into his family. And as you were adopted into his family, you were adopted into the promises that he gave the nation of Israel. Therefore, if you love the Lord your God and you follow the word of God, folks, if you make God number one, if you make living his word number one, and I'm not talking to you talking about being so holy that you're of no earthly good. I'm talking about being who you are, loving the Lord, and living like you should as a Christian. Living by the standards that God has set, not what we have set, but what God has set in his word. And as you begin to do that, God says, I will bless you. Say it with me. God will bless me. If I love him, if I love him, and if I live according to his word. 
it's that easy. Well, Brother Paul, I'm having a rough time right now, financially and everything else. Take a look at what you're doing. I need a better job. Hey, are you a Christian? Are you obeying the word of God? Are you following it? God, I need a better job. How many times have we prayed and watched jobs happen? Many times. Many times. Hey, at one time, uh, Phoenix Hill Gospel Fellowship, was the church we had before, we were known as the baby church. Why? Because ladies who could not have babies would walk in and ask for it. We would pray for them and they would have children. I, I think we stopped counting at 12, isn't it? Something like that. But why? You see, God's blessings. When you learn what God's blessings are, and, and all that's required of you, don't say, why am I not? Anytime you're not being blessed, go ask. Take a look at the Word of God. Take a look at your life. Take a look at what's happening. Take a look at what's stopping the blessings of God from coming. Because God wants to bless you. Okay? All right. Let's look at the curses, though. I want you to go to Leviticus chapter 26. We're going to look at verses... 14 to 27. Take a look at this. And ask yourself, how many times have I done this to myself? Because I actually looked at some of this after what he said. is like, oh, I brought that on myself. And it says, however, if you do not listen to me or obey all these commands, and if you break my covenant, by rejecting my decrees, treating my regulations with contempt, and refusing to obey my commands, I will punish you. I will bring sudden terrors upon you, wasting diseases and burning fevers that will cause your eyes to fail and your life to ebb away. You will plant your crops in vain because your enemies will eat them. I will turn against you, and you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will run even when no one is chasing you. Now listen to the next part. And, in, and if, in spite of all this, you still disobey me, I will punish you seven times over for your sins. I will break your proud spirit by making the skies as unyielding as iron and the earth as hard as bronze. All your work will be for nothing, for your land will yield no crops and your trees will bear no fruit. Okay? Now look at this again. If even then you remain hostile toward me and refuse to obey me, I will inflict disaster on you seven times over for your sins. So we had the original, then we had seven times worse, now it's seven times worse than that. I will send wild animals that will rob you of your children and destroy your livestock. Your numbers will dwindle and your roads will be deserted. There we go now. And if you fail to learn the lesson and continue your hostility toward me, then I myself will be hostile toward you. I will personally strike you with calamity seven times over for your sins. Okay. okay. Let's continue. I will send armies against you to carry out the to carry out the curse of the covenant you have broken. When you run to your towns for safety, I will send a plague or destroy you there. And you will be handed over to your enemies. I will destroy your food supply that ten women will need only one oven to bake, break, bake bread for the families. They will ration your food by weight, and though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. In spite of all of this, you oh, and in spite of all of this, you still refuse to listen and remain hostile toward me, then I will give full vent to my hostility. I myself will punish you. Seven times over for your sins. Sorry, Brother Paul, that's uh, for the Israelite nation. Yeah, right. We saw, we, we read the Word of God, we see it happen. But you've got to understand, folks, if we are not listening to God, if we are disobeying Him, if we are consciously disobeying Him, what does He say? Remember when I'm going to get your attention, I will punish you. Okay, he's going to punish us. Whatever happens, he's going to 
First of all, it's seven times. Then he's going to bring stuff upon you seven times, or you're going to get hit by stuff that's bad. Seven times over. And then, if you don't learn, uh, I'll get you another seven times. And if you don't learn from that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to really start getting angry at you. I'm going to face my anger. But the last part of that, he says, when you really have said, um, you know, God, I'm not interested in I'm not going to obey you. I will give full vent to my anger. And I will bring calamity on you seven times, even worse than anything before. So Christians, God doesn't force us to do anything. Understand that. This is free will. But if you're finding things are going wrong in your life, ask yourself why. Go back to the Word of God. Look at Look and find out if your actions, if your lifestyle, if what you are doing is inviting his anger into your life. You see, and I brought these up tonight because you've got to understand God wants to bless. I want you to say that with me. God wants to bless me. God wants to prosper me. God wants to do something great in my life. All I have to do is begin to believe it, live it, and do it. And I understand. It's, you know, a lot of people say, it's not that easy. I understand. But that's where we, we come into growing and maturing. That's where the Holy Spirit, who knows the mind and the heart of God, knows how to do things correctly and has all wisdom, comes and imparts that in your life so that you can you have the ability through Him to do all the things that need to be done to become the person you desire to be that God wants you to be. We as Christians should not have to sit in our churches waiting for God to show up. We should walk in your, our churches and God's already there because He's inside of us. We've been praising Him so much throughout the week. We walked in, He got there ahead of us because he was excited to be in the service with us. You see, you can change the atmosphere of your church. You can change the atmosphere of your home. You can change the atmosphere, <coughs> the atmosphere of your life. You just have to choose to. And you say, Brother Paul, why are you done? Why did you preach this tonight? Because when I sit down with the Lord, the Lord said, I want to do something with my people. And He showed me. He showed me the church. All of you. I want to do something with my people. And it was like, Paul, I have plans. That was the exciting part. He showed me the, the, as a group. But then the, 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 the declaration, I have plans. For each and every single one of them. I have something I want to do in their midst. Now I want you to shout this next thing with me. I want you to shout out, the past is the past. The past is the past. Good. Now that you've said it, I want you to shout it with authority. Ready? The past, the past. is the past. Good. Now let it be the past. Just stick it in the ground. That which has been wrong, put it as, just grind it into the ground. Because it no longer is part of your life. Let the past be the past. Church, let everything, I don't care, whoever is listening out there, if you belong to the church, if you belong just to the body, if you're just yourself, let the past be the past. Quit, thank you. Let it be gone. Why? Because now, you can let God create in you that which He desires. You see, church, it's time that all of us, each and every single person, begin to grow and mature into that person God wants us to be. He has given us the anointing, the power, the gifts, the fruits, the tools, the army, the spiritual weapons, and he made us his family. Amen. 
And if we have all of that, don't tell me you're weak and spineless. Don't tell me that you can't do it. Brothers and sisters, everybody stand. Move out toward the sides, or in the middle. I only want you to do one thing. You see, because in order for all of this to start taking place in your life, everybody needs to do one thing. If you can't get out of the toilet aisle, just turn to the side like that. That's just me. That's fine. But stand. You know what I want you to do? I want you to just close your eyes and just look up to God and say, God, I like this. I want it to happen in my life. And because of this, I take the first step, and I want you to step forward. I take the first step into all this. Now, here's the wonderful thing. God said tonight, He was starting something new in everybody's life. So whether you realize it or not, you have something from God specifically made for you waiting for you now. Sister Jane, let's start with the pastor. I want you to stretch your hands out toward your pastor. Bless her. I want you to start speaking blessing. Start speaking anointing. Start speaking a revival in her heart, a newness, a new wonderfulness. This is your pastor. You have a right to bless her, and you have a right to call for things in her life that she has been desiring. Come on, church. Go to war for your pastor. reach of your hands. God wants to give you something tonight. You just tell him God will take your hands and begin to bow. If you need prayer, if you want prayer, please come. I'll be glad to pray for you. I'll be glad to pray for you. It's not. 
You are worthy of it all. 
you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. From you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Day and night, night and day, let worship rise. Day and night, night and day, let worship rise. Shekinah glory come, Shekinah glory come. 
shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the King. We shall see the King. We shall see the King.
for you. He'll make a way. Will not by mind and not by power, but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. Not by mind and not by power, but by my spirit says the Lord. Jesus, amen. Praise God. Amen. God is good. 
Amen. Service to service. Amen. Good teaching. Good preaching. Amen. Holy Spirit was good. Amen. We could say we were filled. Amen. With his word. Amen. And by his spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand at this time. Amen. I believe that we will. Holy Spirit has done his work. He's doing his work in us. Amen. In our hearts. Amen. We, we, we've been touched by God. We've been touched by his word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Paul, for your obedience. Amen. To the message that God gave you. Amen. And sharing it with us and equipping us with that. Developing a relationship with God. Amen. And getting... Getting to know what he likes, amen, and what he desires of us to do, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for that. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna close the service and you know, but I just want you guys to stay in that stay in that atmosphere of, of praise and open being open to what God has for us. We still have one more night of, of revival tomorrow, amen. We look forward, amen, to, to what God is going to do in the service, amen. If God should tarry, you know, we'll, we'll just be prepared and, you know, we've been preparing our hearts all week throughout the services, amen, for all that God has to offer us, amen. Amen with his word, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come to you, God, at this time, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that you have done, Lord God, in your people's life, dear Father, God, we thank you for the, for the man of God, Lord Father, who, who's traveled, Lord God, far, Lord God, and we thank you, God, for, for bringing him out here, safe, giving him safe travel, Lord Father, God, we thank you for the word, Lord God, Jesus, which you spoke through him, Lord God, we thank you, God, for his obedience, Lord, we just ask that you just bless him, Lord Father, God, Jesus. We, we ask that you just build a hedge of protection about his, about him and about his family, dear Father God, and everything that is his, Lord God Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Pray that you just bless him, Lord God, Father, with safe passage, dear God, safe travels as he as he journeys back home, Lord Father God. Go before him, beside him, and behind him, dear Heavenly Father God. We thank you, dear God, and all your people, dear Father God, who received that wonderful message, Lord Father God Jesus, of your word, Lord God Jesus, all the teaching, dear God, that you've instilled in us, Lord God. We ask that you just seal it in our hearts, dear Father God. Let it be engraved on the tablets of our heart, Lord God Jesus. Holy Spirit, you bring this message and this word back to our remembrance. In the times of need, dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for equipping us, dear God, for, for establishing us, dear Father God, on your word tonight, dear God Jesus. We thank you for the nourishment, dear Father God, that this word gives our spiritual our spiritual being, dear Heavenly Father God. We thank you for the strength, dear God Jesus. All the all the works, all the miracles, all the signs, dear God Jesus, that took place here tonight, God. We just thank you for we give you all the praise, dear God. We give you all the glory, dear God Jesus. Everybody that was here, Lord Father God, we just ask that you just bless them, dear Heavenly Father God. Holy Spirit, continue to 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 teach them, continue to pour into them even after this when we leave this place we're not leaving your your presence but god you're going with us though father god you're going with us into our homes dear god into into our families dear father god jesus we just ask god that your presence be felt lord father god as we carry you and take you with us dear father god our separate ways dear lord god jesus we thank you dear father god jesus we thank you, Lord God. We just ask that you just bless your people there. Continue to bless your people, God. Even everybody that is down in the down in the valley there, Father God. Down there who are sitting outside, Lord God, listening there, Father God. We ask you, Lord God Jesus, to, to bring them up, Lord Father God. Bring them up there, Heavenly Father God, from where they're at, Lord God Jesus. And bless them there, Father God Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you. We claim salvation for this entire place, dear Father God. We love you tonight, dear God, and we give you all the praise, glory, and the honor, dear Lord Father. In the name of your Son, dear God, and in, in the wonderful name of Jesus, God. We seal this prayer, dear Father God, with the blood of Jesus, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have a special gift for Pastor... Pastor Paul, 
Amen. Amen. It's your size. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> 